Magua Penoy Rosslam stand and face Jerusalem. Blessing of the new moon. Barakatha Yahweh, Barashem Yahweh Shai, Asherah, Matalanawa, Hakadash, Bashalawam, Fawada, Amun. Blessed are Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai, the Most High, in the name of Christ, that gives to us the sap, the salak, who give to us the new moon in peace. Thank you so big. The Ha'ai Ma'ad Asherai Ma'kud, Psalms 121. Anya Harayim, Ayanyim Ya, O Ha'arim, Ma'ayan, Yabawa'a, Isaiah, Isaiah, Yabawa'a, Ma'yahawa, Shai Shai Shamayim, Waratza, La'a, Yenathun, Lamawat, Ragalia, Yala, Yanawum, Shashmar, Hana, La, Yanawum, Wala, Yashun, Shashwama, Yashrela, Yahawa, Shamaya, Yahawa, Tazaya, I am Yah, Yum Yum Yah. Yawamum, Hashemash, La Ah, Hakaya, Wayarat, La Ah, Baliyala, Yahawa, Yashemaya, Makal, Ra, Yashemar, Napasha, Yahawa, Yashemar, Hawalakia, Wabawa Aya, Maitha, Wa Ai, Aiwalum, Bahasham, Yahawa. Psalms 121, the song of the Greeks. I will lift up my eyes into the hills from where it's cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. Shema Yashrael Hill Israel. Shema Yashrael Yahweh. Allah Yahweh. Shema Yashrael Yahweh. Allah Yahweh, Yahweh, Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Amen. Amen. Tapla Yahweh, the Lord's prayer. Abiyanawa, Shabashamayim, Kodash, Haya, Shamka, Yahawa, Malakotka, Saba'a, Ratazawanka, Haya, Aisha, Baratiza, Ka, Bashamayim, Nathalanawa, Lakum, Yawum, Za, Wasalakwanawa, Kababatanawa, Kasalaknawa, Kababat, you know, Wala Aya, Habaya Nawa, O Nasayawan, Abo, our shy now, Marai, Kaya, Laka, Hamalakwa, Wahala, Wasa Para, La Iolam, Amun. Matthew 6 and 9. After this minute, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Ha'ashirah matazawaf, Ten Commandments. La'ah, Yahaya, Laka, Alahayim, 
Akarim Alpanya La Ah Thai Sha La Ka Paso Wala Ah Thai Badum La Ah Al Kwaka Shamwa Yahawa Alahayaka La Shua Zakar Ah Payuwum Hashabath La Kodashwa Kabad Abiaka Wa Amaka La Ah the Ratazak La Ah from the Ah La Ah Thagana La Ah Thaina Shakwo La Ah Thakamad Ko Ashara La Raika Amun Deuteronomy five and seven. Thou shalt have none of the gods before me. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. That thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And remember that thou wast the servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Neither shalt thou commit adultery, neither shalt thou steal, neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor, neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife, neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his maid servant, or his maid servant, his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. Amen. Amen. Yeshabu, I'll be seated. Lock the door back up. Wow. Barakatha Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai, Asherah, Natalanawa, Par Yahagapin, Tawada Amun, La Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, Ath Yasha Allah. Madwa Panyoy Roslam stand and face Jerusalem. Barakatha Yahawa, Hagadol, Rakuam, Abiyar, Wanara'a, Ali Awan, Malak, Sho, Shomayam, Waratiza, Wako, Dobarium, Kayayam, Wagum. Amashia, Mayahawa, Adawan Nawa, Ahab Nawa, Afala, Yawa Aitiza, Yahawa Shah, Zakar Nawa, Yahawa, Barataza One, Aimka, Yasha Allah, Aiza Nawa, Bana, Wasa, Yasha Allah, O Nanawa, Yum Yun, Aitha, Kayawumyum, Makwadam. Baba Kusha, Shalat, Maya Ka'ala, Wahataz Wadat, Alahayim, La, Maganawa, Rapanawa, Washamar, Ailnawa, Baikwa, Shalat, Taroka, Shal, Yahawashai, Lanawa, Lalamanawa, Rabim, Kakaba, 
Tabawana, by the Aif, Shal, the Barka. Bahasham, Yahushai, for water from God, for I will um, Amun. English translation. Blessed are you, Yahweh, the great, merciful, mighty, terrible, most high power, king of heaven and earth, and all things living. And also the anointed from Yahweh, our Lord, our friend, the wonderful counselor, Yahweh Shai. Remember us, Yahweh, favorably, your people, Israel. Help us build and gather Israel. Most high, we beg you, right now, like the days of old. Please send Michael and the righteous powers to protect us, heal us, and watch over us. Mainly send the spirit of Yahweh Shai to us to teach us much wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of thy word. In the name of Yahweh Shai, thank you always and forever. So be it. Blessed are you, Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, that gives to us the law. Barakah to Yahweh. Barakah to Yahweh. Shai. Asherah. Atholanawa. Atholanawa. Blessed are you, Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, that gives to us light to see. Barakah to Yahweh. Barakah to Yahweh. Shai. Asherah. Atholanawa. A war. Lara Blessed are Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai that gives us the ram so on the call of the people. Barakah to Yahweh. Barakah to Yahweh. Shai. Asherah. Atholanawa. Quran. Ha'ayol. La Quran. Ha'ayim. Shabbat. Right, a shark kadash or happy new moon to the brothers and sisters, those Akim that's here at the school here in Germantown. Uh, shalom and a shark kadash, and also those that's listening on the teleconference line. Happy ninth new moon, a day of celebration for us as a people that we, throughout our history and our generations, always was commanded to come before the most high and honor and worship, separating ourselves from the cares of the world, separating ourselves from our jobs and all other burdens to come and worship and present ourselves before the Lord, offer a sacrifice, whether it be our time, food, donations, whatsoever it may be, but we do not do a sacrificial sacrifice. We understand that Christ was our ultimate sacrifice. So again, we say shalom or peace in the Hebrew and a shah or happy kadash, meaning new moon, right? So. As we start this new moon class off, Marie, one, maybe two scriptures on the new moon, uh, seeing that majority of us so far that's uh, here in the school and those uh, who may be on the teleconference line um, have some form of understanding pertaining to the new moon. I'll dive into a, 
a short class here, but I'm going to read in Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, the 33rd chapter. Ecclesiasticus, here, but Ecclesiasticus chapter 33. It's a lot. And I'm going to read from verse 7. All right. So these are scriptures that we should already have annotated in our notes, preferably under a section called New Moon, whether it be in your phone, in your tablets, in a notebook, on some Bible, wherever. We should have at least 10, I would say not even 10, at least 12 New Moon scriptures, 12 keeping it, you know, spiritual with the 12 tribes, right? You should at least have 12 good New Moon scriptures, but I'm going to pull one, all right? So it says in Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 33, verse 7, it says, Why does one day excel another when as all the light of every day in the year is of the sun? Right. Meaning that every day we wake up, the sun is still going to be present, whether we see it or we don't, because a cloud is blocking our view right on this side of the earth or wherever we at in our geographical location. Right. The sun still rises in the moon and the, and the sun sets. Right. So what makes a day different from this? By the knowledge of the Lord would distinguish, and he altered seasons and feasts. The most high has given his knowledge, he's given his wisdom to us as the people to distinguish that certain days are esteemed above other days. Certain days are more important than other days to the Lord. So those days is which we now gravitate to. We high mark, we make alarms on our phones, we get calendars and we mark them on the calendar so that we can make a proclamation and we can remember that these days are coming up. Sometimes some of us, you know, forget because we may not have the new moon flyer or the high holy day flyer, or you're not paying attention. You're not list dialing in the classes, but you always should have an understanding of the most high's knowledge, which distinguishes between seasons and feast days, right? There should be no excuse while any of us not have had understanding and had the information pertaining to the Lord's holy days and his new moons, right? So reading verse eight again, it says, by the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinguished he, and he altered seasons and feasts, the holy feast days of the Lord. It says, some of them hath he made high days, high holy days. We know that there are three, also four major high holy days of the most high. That being what? What are these four major high holy days that the Most High has for all men? What are these four major high holy days? Yakazak. The four major high holy days. You don't know the high holy days? Name you don't what name some high holy days that you know. Oh, yeah. First fruit. The first fruit. That's one of the major four ones, which is also known as our feast of uh feast of weeks. Keep going. Feast of tabernacles. That's another major high holy day. That's two, right? Also known as the feast of in gatherings, feast of booths. What's the first major high holy day that we keep in the beginning of the year? In the spring season. First major high holy day of the year. We keep the first new moon of the year. There's a major high holy day in that same month. You said that one already. Feast of unleavened bread, or also known as the what? Begins with a P. Begin Passover. There you go. Right. So that's three. Now there was another one that was added that was now also made likened to the Feast of Tabernacles. That we kept the same service like we kept with the Feast of Tabernacles. We kept this holy day as well. What was that one? I'll give you a hint. It's in the winter season. It's coming up in this month. Uh-uh, that's the first one. You just named that one. You can't name the ones that you already named. That's three. There's one more that's coming up in this month. Huh? No, you're thinking of Esau's month. We're talking about our month. <laughs> huh? 
Help them out, Gabar. What's that one that's coming up? Uh, rededication at altar. Rededication at altar. The feast of dedication, right? Those are the four. So the Most High, when we go through the scriptures, um, toward in the close towards the ending of this ninth month, we're going to get into the feast of the rededication of the altar that we're going to keep for eight days and keep it like we kept the feast of the tabernacles, right? So now. As we're reading here, it says some of them have he made high days based on his knowledge, based on the uh, commandment that the Lord has in the scriptures. That's how we now signify and, and, and mark it in our calendars to separate that from everything else. It says, and hollow them. And some of them have he made ordinary days, right? Like come next Tuesday, it's an ordinary day. Next Wednesday, it's an ordinary day. Thursday, it's an ordinary day. Friday, it's an ordinary day until the sun sets on Friday, then that becomes a high day to the most high. That's a day, that's the Sabbath day. That's now where, that's different from the other days. And his knowledge says what we do on those days and what we don't do, right? So this is something that we're pretty much aware of. But as we go through these things, remember, I always bring it out, especially for, for the men, you know, all of the brothers that's in here, these things is the rudimentary stuff that we need to know. Our holy days are the most high. We need to know like we knew Thanksgiving is coming up in a couple of weeks when we was in the world. Even though Esau and the world made proclamation, they started making sales and all these other different things telling you what's going to be on sale during Black Friday. So you know what's going to come the day before. All of that, that's cool. That's what they do. But we need to now do our own thing and keep it up here. Remember, the, the Most High and Yahweh always warn us about being caught naked, right? Being caught naked spiritually up in your brain with the Most High's laws and his commandments so that you are not being caught made ashamed, right? You go out there in the streets and somebody said, can you show me about such and such? Uh, and you caught out there, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. So we got to make sure we work and put an effort. Same thing I was telling the brother Jermaine had a camp. I was like, you just can't come to the classes. You just can't come to the listen to the Sabbath services. And then every day, rest of the week, you don't read and you don't check out nothing. You don't stay, you don't do nothing. Can't be that way. You got to be able to go into the scriptures and read something. Put a put a, a challenge for yourself, an objective for yourself. I want to learn about this. I want to, you know, get more understanding on this and go and do your own research. You can't always rely on Kahan Nabiya or or Kahum Paquad to go and bring this out. You got to put forth that effort. So that's what we as a brotherhood, as a nation, always need to do, brothers and sisters, right? I was interested in last in, uh, last night's class. Sister Hanukkah said, yes, and I want to get more into the seven seals because I'm hearing certain things. I was like, whoa, she getting into some meat, but that's what she wants to get more information on, right? So we got to be that way. She checked certain things out and certain things didn't make sense to her. So she wants to now come into class and get that information. Brothers got to be able to get down some of these basics, right? Mainly a lot of times, you know, when we're doing classes and Kahan Nabi Yapa can, can attest, you don't want the sisters to one up you, <laughs> right? Sometimes there's some sisters who will not say anything purposely so the brothers can, can answer because they know the answer. They've been around, right? So you always now want to make sure that we are fitting that bill, that mold that the Most High says we're the head of the women. Right. We are the head of the women. Christ is the head of man. Right. I'm pretty sure we all know Christ has more knowledge and wisdom than we do. Right. He has way more knowledge and wisdom than we do. That's why we look to him to help guide us. Same thing with the Most High. The Most High has way more knowledge and wisdom than Yahweh does. Right. There's certain things that Christ don't know that he still relies on his father for. So now in the same vein, we'd want to have more wisdom than our sisters, than our mothers, than our daughters. We don't want to now be relying on them to give us the wisdom. No, right? We got to step up our game, all right? So then I'm going to read it again. Some of them have he made high days and hollow them, and some of them have he made ordinary days, all right? So that's this thing, which is pointed, it's, it's pointed because right now, like I just mentioned, we're getting into that so-called holiday season, right? We're getting into the so-called Thanksgiving. We're getting into so-called Christmas, Christmas Eve. We're getting into so-called New Year's, right? All of these things is coming back to back to back and there's a spirit involved. But the Lord even has it that we have our own things. We have the new moon. We have the rededication of the altar for eight days. We have the Sabbath every week to take our mind off that, right? So this is what the Lord 
pardon me, has given us for as a people. So one of your brothers, make sure you get one new moon scripture on deck between Gabar, Yakazak, and Patak. Make sure you have one. I'm going to pick which one, but hold off the one. So now I'm going to get into, let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Let's change up the format of just going through new moon scriptures. Let's get into something. New phones on mute, phones on mute. <laughs> All right, let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Right, Ezekiel, uh, the 16th chapter. So I thought to go through this one day during a class, but after last night's class and the previous class is how the spirit has been working as far as for how some of the writings of the most high that the Lord had the prophets write is very poetic, right? It's very twofold, right? It has double meanings or it has figurative meanings that a lot of times most people don't catch. They stand is going, but I think this one is pretty much a good synopsis of us as a people, us as a nation on how the Lord reared us up, right? So I'm going to go through you know, a good portion of the uh, verses here tonight for this new moon service, and then we'll get a new moon on verse, and then we'll uh, close out for the prayers. But this should be um, somewhat tawab or good, um, spirit wills it. So let's go to Ecclesiastes, uh, Ezekiel, so like Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 1, right? So it says, again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations, right? So the Most High now is about to kind of paint a picture about how Jerusalem got to be where they are. That's what usually happens when we out there, you're speaking to certain people, they're seeing the climate of what's going on in the world, and you need to give them a direction of how we got to where we are as a people. So the Lord is going to kind of start from a certain point in our upbringing. It says in verse three, and say, thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, talking about the people of Israel, not the city, not the land, but the actual city, people. Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite and thy mother an Hittite, right? So, you know, if you get these Egyptologists reading something like this, they're going to have a field day with this because they're going to say, see, we are, this is who we are, right? We are the so-called Africans. We are these people. But what the Most High is really getting into when he's talking about thy nativity is of the land of Canaan, it's talking about what the Most High started, where he gave us our homeland to start off us as a nation. This was always promised to us from our forefather. Go to Genesis real quick, chapter 17. Genesis 17. This is one of several scriptures that kind of highlights this from the beginning of what the Most High us have. Genesis 17. And I'm going to read from seven. Genesis chapter 17 and verse seven. And it says, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God or a power unto thee and to thy seed after thee. So this is the Most High speaking to Abraham, right? That he was going to make a covenant with him and the seed, a specific seed or gene genealogy line that was going to come from out of Abraham forever, an everlasting agreement, right? To be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God, right? So the Lord said the land of Canaan was going to be promised to the seed of Abraham, going from the seed of Isaac and then transferring to Jacob, which would then become Israel. The Lord said that land was now promised to Abraham and his lineage. So this is why it says the nativity, where you are now becoming a native, where I'm now identifying and recognizing you as this people, you're going to go and take it from the people that's in that land, right? The Canaanites, right? 
So this is where we get this from. This is where Ezekiel is, is, is highlighting here. So if we go back to Ezekiel 16 and 3, it says, thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan, where we were established as a people, right? Thy father was an Amorite and thy mother an Hittite. Why does it say thy father was an Amorite and thy mother was a Hittite? I'm reading in Ezekiel 16. Otherwise, you know, they're looking. <laughs> because uh, we fought against them to conquer the land. Right. These were the inhabitants, the nations of the Hermetic people that was dwelling in the land of Canaan. So if the Mosai said our nativity was in the land of Canaan, our father and mother were these Hermetic nations, not meaning that they came out of our genealogy because we know proof that the Lord had uh, three sons that came out of Noah. Ham was the lineage of those people that was in the land before Israel got there. We come out of Shem, right? We are Shemitic people. The Amorites and to Hitt Hittites are Hemetic people. So it's not really talking about we are their actual descendants, but it's talking about the land that we would go and take from them, right? Go to Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. And verse five. This is what happened when we came out of the land of Egypt by the hand of Moses, by the power and will of the Most High. So Exodus chapter 13 and verse five. Goodbye, we can read that real quick. All right, everybody say come. All right, Exodus 13 and 5. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep this service in this month. Right. So here it is, it's highlighting that when we came into the land of the Canaanites. The Amorites was there, the Hittites is there, the Hivites was there, the Jebusites was there, right? The Girgashites is there. These are all the different Hermetic kingdoms that was in that region, right? That we now went and took of that land, right? So that's why it's now saying it's calling it a mother of us or a father of us, but it's the people that was there we took of that land that was promised to us as a people. So the Mosai is now just getting into the beginnings of us now coming into our nationality, us being a nation in the land that was promised to us. So now let's go back to Ezekiel 16. So it says in verse four, Ezekiel 16 and four, it says, and as for thy nativity, in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all, right? So this is what you do normally with a baby or a child, right? When you go and a baby's born, they go and cut the umbilical cord. So it has no self-reliance on mother, right? It now is now coming to the world to now get those teachings. But here it says that the navel was not cut, right? It still now had some attachment of self-reliance on the earth. On from the people. It says, neither was thou washed in water to supple there. A baby is born. It got all kind of blood and everything all over it. The people take it and wash the baby all up. We in the beginning wasn't washed up yet. Something had to come and wash us up. Then it says, thou was not salted at all. And you're like, salted? What is that we're talking about? So now when you see in ancient times, you look into the history, they would take water and salt and they would also rub that on the baby's body right? We didn't get that as a people. We didn't get that love that was normally given right away. So that's what the Most High is saying. They didn't do that for y'all. Y'all was a people that was in captivity. You was a nation that was multiplying and going through all kinds of things. You were self-reliant 
on the other people. No one took care of you, cut your umbilical cord, swaddled you and held you close, right? This is the Lord showing you how he saw us as a people. Verse five, none I pitied thee to do any of these unto thee to have compassion upon thee, but thou was cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born, right? So no one look at that and say, dang, nobody taking care of or this little baby here. You know how sometimes people will find a, a baby by a trash can or a dumpster or on the front steps of a hospital or whatever, and someone will pass by and see it, and they'll do what? Rush to go take care of this baby. Well, in our case, it was like we was just left there. Everybody walked past and seen us and didn't want to go and take care of us, right? Something or someone had to go become that figure to go and treat this nation of people like that baby that was left on the side, right? It says, verse, verse uh, six, and when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Yeah, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live, right? So now the most high is saying, no one passed by and looked and sought to have care for you. I did. I was walking by, seeing you by the trash can, seeing you by the hospital front step. And I came over and grabbed you up and say, oh, I'm going to take care of this little one. I'm going to give what all that this little baby needs in order to live. And what is it the most I says that we was given to make us to live? Go to Deuteronomy. <clears throat> Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 15. Again, this is a nice poetic way that the Most High is showing us how he has dealings with us, right? You know, rappers and poets and R&B singers, they do their thing, but the most high is the way we draw all that from. Say again? Ezekiel was known for that. He was known to use his word and use a lot of examples, mm -hmm. right? To explain what he means to make us understand. Right, but keep in mind, as Ezekiel is saying this, remember verse one of Ezekiel 16 and one, it says, and the word of the Lord came unto me. So the Lord is now telling Ezekiel, write this down pertaining to my people. So this is inspired by God himself, right? So this is Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 15. It says, see, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Mm -hmm. And that I commanded this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. So the commandments was given to us as a people to do what? Make us live in the land that we was now going to be promised or given, which is the land of Canaan, right? So this is the same thing that we're reading here now in Ezekiel, the 16th chapter in the sixth verse. I'm going to reread again the sixth verse in Ezekiel 16. Let's go back. It says, and when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, your own wickedness, right? Following after everyone else, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Yeah, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. So this is now going to go into that interaction between us and the most high, the back and forth of how he dealt with us. Verse seven, I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. And thou has increased and waxing great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. So now he's speaking about a whole nation of people, but he's describing them as a figure, a woman, right? It says that thy breasts were fashioned, thy hair was grown, and thou wast naked and bare before the Most High. Same thing you read when you read in Genesis, where it says that they were naked, right? And they were not ashamed. In this case, it's the same thing that happened to Israel. 
They were not ashamed because Adam and Eve hadn't sinned yet when you read Genesis, the second chapter. Didn't happen to the third chapter right, of Genesis where they were naked and ashamed. This one was that they had nothing to be ashamed of before the Most High because they were now given the laws of the Most High and they were, we were following it as a people. So as it's talking about how they were fashioned and their hair was grown, later on, consider when you read the book of Song of Solomon. Right, because sometimes when people read the book of the Song of Solomon, they read it very literal. Right, they talk about how you know sexual Solomon was, but it's not talking about Solomon himself, it's talking about the Most High in Christ and their relationship with the nation of Israel. It's the same thing that's here in this wording. Don't look at it as a man talking to a woman, look at it as a, to a God talking to his people, the same way how we're going to read about it as we go down. Verse 8. It says, now when I pass by thee and look upon thee, behold, time, the time of love. Then when the Lord was dealing with us, who was keeping his commands, man, it was great. It's a time of love, right? And how do you keep love? By showing action with keeping in the commandments. So that's why the most high is describing it now. It's like we just found love and everything is fly. You're going out, taking them to the movies. You're going here. You're buying them gifts. You're doing all these things. Right. This is kind of how it's being described. And I spread my skirt over thee and I covered thy nakedness. Yeah, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. So it's the same wordplay that Song of Solomon is talking about. Like, listen, I'm kicking it to you. I'm saying all kind of nice things and, you know, dropping whatever new line brothers have when they talk to women or even women who drop certain lines to brothers. Right. And after a while, you say, listen, what we doing here? We together. We go together. Yeah, we go together. You was mine and I'm yours. Right now you enter into an agreement, a covenant with one another. Y'all exclusive. I don't deal with nobody else. This is what the Lord is saying here. I now covered you here. Take my coat, put my coat over you. Right. You know how a man feels sometimes when you go somewhere and his wife put put the put a take his, his coat or his sweater. And he's just sitting there. He's like, yeah, that's mine right there. Let everybody know. That's how the Most High is now covering us spiritually with his commandments. Right? The word play is like a love story. Right? Verse 9. Actually, let me go to Jeremiah real quick. Jeremiah. I'm sorry. Not Jeremiah. Job. I'm looking at Jeremiah and I'm thinking like, why the heck? The book of Job, All right? So this is when it says, I'm going here for when it talks about, and I spread my skirt over thee and I covered thy nakedness, right? So he took some article of clothing and then covered Israel, right? So Job 29, 14 says, and I put on righteousness and it clothed me, right? It's not talking about literal physical clothing, but a spiritual one, which was his laws, his commandments, his wisdom, his history, his prophecies, all of that, the fruits of the spirit and what clothes us as individuals. It says, my, my judgment was as a robe, right? Like how you throw on a robe and you go out, come out the bathroom or you got a nice royal robe when you're coming out of a, a royal court. It says, and a diadem, like a crown, right? That you put upon your head. That's what the most highest commandments and laws does for the nation of Israel. It set us apart. We're like royalty when we go out there amongst the nations based on his righteousness, right? That's what we are clothed with. Would you say, Pata? By doing the right thing. By doing the right thing, by keeping his commandments to live, right? So now let's go back to Ezekiel 16. That was Job 29, 14. J-O-B. You got to stay on your J-O-B. And 14. Eight. Right? So it says, Then washed I thee with water, yeah, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee and I anointed thee with oil, right? Going back to the same way when a baby 
is first born and has blood and certain things on it. You got to wash that baby up to take that blood and everything off of the baby. That's what the Mosai said he began to do with us as a people. He said, now I'm going to start giving you laws to wash that blood away. Don't eat that. Don't worship that. Don't put that on. Don't go over there. Don't sacrifice that. Right. All of these things now began to wash away the blood or the sin or the wickedness from off of the nation of Israel. Right. That's how the Lord is wording it here. Verse 10. I clothed thee also with broadened work and shod thee with badger skin. And I girded thee about with fine linen and I covered thee with silk. So now what he's getting into is just not talking about everybody's like that. He's getting into how he started to fashion us as a nation. When did he do that? Go to the book of Exodus 26. Check this out because it talks about he clothed us with broidered work and shod thee with badger skins. Right. Go to Exodus chapter 26. Exodus 26. Exodus 26, and I'm going to start at 13. So Exodus chapter 26, verse 13, it says, and a cubit on the one side and a cubit on the other side of that which remaineth in the lint of the curtains of the tent. And it shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on this side and on that side to cover it. So in the building of the tabernacle of the Most High, he's now given a specific detail on how to even worship him. Right. So the coverings that went over the tabernacle and the tent, he's about to describe. Verse 14. And thou shalt make a covering for the tents of ram skins dyed red, and a covering over to like and a covering above of badger skins, right? So that's what we're reading right now in Ezekiel 16 that he clothed us with broader work and shod thee with badger skins. It's not talking about on our clothes, it's what we decorated and adorned the tabernacle or the tent of the most high, right? So even the temple of worship. The Most High even ha fashioned that on how he wanted us to be beautified, right? To the detail. It goes down to the exact measurement of what that was supposed to be, right? So as we go into these now readings, it's not talking about us. It's talking about even the temple and the things that are therein. Everybody following? So let's go back to Ezekiel 16. Ezekiel 16. And 10 again. I clothed thee also with broidered work and shod thee with badger skin, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands and a chain on thy neck. Right? So now it's getting into the priests, right? So the Lord now had the priest adorn a certain way. They wore the matter of fact, let me get it. Go to the book of Exodus 28. Exodus chapter 28. Oh, there's a lot here. Let me shorten this. I'm going to start at verse, or I'm going to read from verse 30. So Exodus chapter 28, verse 30, it says, and thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment, the urim and the thorm, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. And thou shalt make the robe of ephah of all blue, and there shall be an hole in the top of it in the midst thereof. It shall have a binding of woven work round about the whole of it, as it were the whole of a habergun. There it be not rent. 
and beneath upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof and bells of gold between them round about. So as you read throughout these chapters, it now goes into how the Most High is now fashioning Aaron and the priests. They wore the Urim and the Thorm on their breastplates. They would then have what we look like uh, Yahweh Kanun has, has it on his um, chain, the breastplate that has the 12 stones of the children of Israel. He wore that on his neck, right? So how the Lord fashioned the priest, the temple, the city, all of that was now given to us by the Most High to beautify us, to make us look like nothing else, right? As you're describing this, this is uh, what the Most High said in Matthew 5, 48. Be ye perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what the Most High is, is, is describing here. Mm -hmm. And let everything be done decently and in order. Right. The Most High is every. Like the priest that like you mentioned, every section or everything that he does concerning Israel, concerning the kingdom, is supposed to be perfectly ordered in, in the way the way you want it. The same way heaven is kind of like the same way John is describing how everything is set up in heaven per perfectly. Right. That's pretty much what the Messiah wants us to do. Okay. In Matthew what? Matthew five forty eight. In First Corinthians fourteen forty. So when people hear be ye perfect as the Father in heaven is perfect, it goes a long way. It don't just go, you're going to be like uh, perfect and not sin. This means everything is done orderly and exactly how the most I was. And everything is in, in, in its proper place. Right. So now let's go back to Ezekiel 16. Right, right now, the relationship is good. You know, in the majority, the majority of Israel relationship, especially now, it starts off good. Those first month, two, three months, be great. Y'all going everywhere. Y'all doing everything. That's what we're reading about now. But there's going to come a part. There's going to come something in the relationship that's going to have a relationship go left. Right. We're going to get to there. So this is verse 11. I deck thee also with ornaments and I put bracelets upon thy hands and a chain on thy neck. And I put a jewel on thy forehead and earrings in thine ears and a beautiful crown upon thy head. Thou thus was thou decked with gold and silver and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil and thou was exceeding beautiful and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. So that's how what the, the priests looked like. That's what they offered and sacrificed. Right. The fine flour and the things that the most I had, the drink offering, the meat offering, all of these was perfect. And then what happened? We blossomed into a nice kingdom. Right. A nice people was now set before the Lord after he found us on the wayside. Now, we know the most High literally didn't find us because he predestinated us to be his chosen people. Yeah. But he's now being poetic and how he came and he's dealing with us. Right. It says in verse 14. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. So now our fame and everything else went out everywhere. So much so that when you're reading the kings, the queen of Sheba, she had to come to see of this great people, hear of the wisdom that came from out of them, right? That's what the Lord now did. He made us famous amongst the heathen. It says, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I have put upon thee, Say if Yahweh power. So, like what Paqua just brought about, be perfect as the most high is in heaven is perfect. So he said, everything that y'all looked like and how y'all operated was perfect and beautiful because of me. Not of your own. Not that you went out and did or found some knowledge. No, I'm the one who did that. I'm the one who put you on. I'm the one who found you and dressed you up. You know how sometimes you go and you find somebody, you know, women like to always say that, you know, they found some. You know, they found somebody they can mold and shape, right? I saw him. He, he had potential, but, you know, I got him, and then I went and dressed him up, you know, got him some nice clothes and did this for him and got him a job and everything else. Upgrade. Say again? Upgrade. I upgraded him, right, right? The most high upgraded us, right? He made us better than anything else that was out there on the street, right? But, you know, sometimes when you get upgraded, what happens, right? You get high-minded. You get beside yourself. You start thinking that you really that guy or that girl, that chick. 
And then now you start looking everywhere else and you start now really leaving out of a relationship and going somewhere else. This is what the Most High is now about to see with us as a people, right? Verse 15, but thou didst trust in thine own beauty and playedest the harlot before because of thy renown and pourest out thy fornications on every one that passed by. His it was, right? So now here it became, once you got famous, once you got everything that I gave you, now you start thinking, man, I don't really need him like that. <laughs> what do I need him for? I'm good, right? And now you start dealing with anybody else that passed by, like a harlot, right? Anyone that now catches your eye, you over there giving a little words to this person. That's why the most I said we played the whore, right? Because we got high off the hog. Go to Deuteronomy, not the hog, but off the lamb. Let me say that. Go to uh, Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. <laughs> Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. I'm going to read from verse 11. Deuteronomy 8 chapter and the 11th verse. Yeah. You get that one too. So this is Deuteronomy 8 and 11. It says, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God and not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So Moses emphasized on where our beauty came from. Right. Where we got all this goodness from. It didn't come from us. It came from the Lord. Beware lest you forget all of that. Verse 12. Lest when thou has eaten and are full and has built goodly houses and dwelt therein. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied. The Lord beautified us. He got us like his silver. Like what he said during Solomon's time, it was like silver was just all in the streets. We didn't have to worry about nothing, right? Beware, lest when that comes, you forget how we got all of this. Verse 13, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, who fed thee with, in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. So that's showing you that all that what happened in that wilderness was supposed to be a reminder for us in these last days to not do the same thing that our forefathers did back then. Verse 17, and thy say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand have gotten me this wealth. That's when you start popping your collar, right? That's like um, in the movie, uh, it was first, can't, I, it was Can't Buy Me Love. And what was uh, Nick Cannon's um, version of that? The one he had with, um, yeah, I forget what that was, but. You know what I'm talking about. On both those movies, the Edomite one and the Israelite one, both of them, right? The woman upgraded the brother, the man, right? And what happened? He forgot where all this came from. He forgot where he got that fame from. It came from her, right? In this case, we got the fame from him, from the Most High. And what happened? He started to pop his collar or they popped their collar and dissed the women. And the women had to come and expose them, right? Love don't cost a thing. That's what it was. Can't buy me love and then love don't cost a thing. Both those movies kind of show you how when somebody gets prideful and high minded, what happens, right? You forget everything that you had just now brought yourself up to that point and then you start dissing it. That's the same thing that the Most High was warning us as a people to not fall into that mind, Amen. right? Reading verse 18, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. So the Lord is the one who taught us 
wealth, how to get it, how to attain it, how to sustain it, right? You know, some people just want a handout, but it's best for you to learn how to get it and how to keep it. The most I taught us that. If you do these commandments, guess what? I'm going to bless you and give you all of this. It's easy, right? And when he did it, he said, man, look what I got, right? And then we was that was a downfall for quiet. And that's how the most I give up. Some people think the most I have to just hand you things just like that. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the laws and principles on how to get what the most I give, give it to you if you follow the commandments. Mm -hmm. And you will know the the ends and not follow this principle, follow that principle, follow that principle, boom, that's what love right there. Exactly. You don't just give you the money and just you don't do nothing, and then you see money just coming in front of your resources as a matter of fact. Right. Exactly. So now going back to Ezekiel, uh, or oh, somebody getting that verse, uh, Deuteronomy 32 15. I heard somebody mention that verse about waxing fat. That's what that is. Deuteronomy 32 and 15. Right. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 15. It says, but Jeshurun, the upright one, that's what it means, waxed fat and kicked, right? <laughs> Shining, as, the, as another Bible verse says. It says, thou art waxing fat. It's talking about Israel. Jeshurun's talking about Israel. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. That was Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 15, right? We got big headed, wax fat and kicked, right? You know how you are a horse and every now and then somebody's in with a horse or a cattle and it kicks against his owner. That's kind of like what happened. So I don't need most high like that no more. I got everything, right? So the Lord, when you read further down, he was upset, it provoked him Israel provoked him to jealousy because they went and did other things. That's what we're going to read here mm -hmm. in this chapter, but it's just worded differently and poetically, right? So now going back to Ezekiel 16, verse 17 now, actually, no, verse 16, Ezekiel 16 and 16. And of thy garments thou didst take and deckest thy high places with diverse colors, and placed the harlot thereupon. The like thing shall not come, neither shall it be so. So everything that the Lord gave us, right, we went and took and now made it fashionable for something else when you play the harlot. It's like somebody buy you a nice coat, a nice dress, or something else, and you like, all right, cool, I mean, but then she going out with somebody else with what you bought. Right. Or you don't bought her a car and now she in the car and you pull up somebody else driving the car. You're like, yo, what the hell is this? I bought you the car, not for you to go get with some other guy. That's what now was going on with Israel. We taking all these fashionable things and now going and giving it to somebody else. That should not be so is what the most I was saying. You mad as I don't know what. Get the hell out of my car. You know, you about to go fight this brother over what this woman just did. Right. So now, here it is, the voice of the Most High says in verse 17, thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold and of my silver, which I had given thee, and madest to thyself images of men and didst commit whoredom with them. So now he's getting very specific, right? I've given you gold, allow you to flourish as a people, and then you went out and made idols like the golden calf. You made images of other people and started to worship them. Right. Go to the book of Isaiah. Chapter one. Isaiah chapter one. I'm going to read twenty one. So it says in Isaiah 121, it says, how is the faithful city becoming harlot? What's the faithful city? Jerusalem, Israel, Mount Zion. How is the faithful city, the city that the Lord took and nourished and, and, and 
swaddle and suckle now become a harlot or a whore. It says it was full of judgment. It had all of the commandments of the Most High. At one point, it says righteousness lodged in it. But it says, but now murderers. Now there are wicked individuals that are now within the faithful city. It says thy silver is become dross, thy wine mixed with water, right? So it says thy silver has become dross. Dross means it's worthless. Like it's um, probably, you don't, you can't do anything with it no more. So that silver that the Lord has given us, that gold that the Lord has given us, is, is worthless. Why is it worthless? Because we just read that people are taking the silver and the gold to make idols out of. Now that precious gold is, it got to be taken away and destroyed, right? It says, and thy wine, the great wine that we have mixed with water. So now you got a nice big batch of wine and then somebody come and dump a whole gallon or a whole trough of water in it. Now you want that good wine, right? Not to be, not to be mistaken with wine drinking with water because you'll see brothers drink some wine, but you also, you know, uh, back it up with some water, right? That also goes into, you know, sometimes when you, people who drink a lot, right? People who drink a lot, they'll drink some cognacs and vodkas and things of that nature. But then it gets to a certain point they say, hold on, I got to drink some water, man. I got to drink some water, right? Because I got to make sure, because I want to stay balanced. I don't want to be over the over the over the edge so that water will now also start to flush and clean out certain things but it's not supposed to be mixed in with it right you want to drink that and then you want to drink your water to now follow it up that's like the best chaser for alcohol and things of that nature but now it becomes diluted and polluted when you now have this because now of our unfaithfulness to the most high so let's go back to ezekiel 16 that was Isaiah 1, 21 to 22. So this is now, we have verse 18. It says, and tookest thy broidered garments and coverest them. And thou hast set mine oil and mine incense before them. Right? So now the, the, the garments, the broidered work that I gave you, you covered that up. And then the things that I gave for you to come worship me, you done took and started worshiping them with it. My oil and my incense, now you're starting to do that for them. How does that make the most I feel? Very, very jealous and very, very upset. Go to the book of Isaiah 57. Isaiah chapter 57. So this is Isaiah chapter 57, verse eight, right? To go with this oil and incense and covering themselves and things of that nature, right? So this is Isaiah chapter 57, verse eight. It says, behind the doors also and the post hast thou set up thy remembrance, for thou hast discovered thyself to another than me and art gone up. Thou hast enlarged thy bed and made thee a covenant with them. Thou lovest their bed where thou sawest it. So it's still free to giving it to us like a relationship. You went and found another guy. The hell is this? <laughs> you went and seen what he had and you liked that more than me. You liked his bed better than my bed. The heck? Reading on verse nine, and thou wentest to the king with ointment. You ain't come alone. You came with gifts. You took my ointment, my incense, my oils, and gave it to him. And didst increase thy perfumes, and didst send thy messengers far off, and didst debase thyself even unto hell. Right? Your name is like mud right now. You've just made your reputation in these streets look bad. People are seeing you now. They said, wasn't she with him? Well, how is she out here dressed like that going with him, right? So now you just debased yourself. You brought yourself, your renowned, famous reputation has come all the way down. <laughs> con, con, con. 
All right, let's go back. Ezekiel 16. I stopped at uh, verse 9. So back in Ezekiel, uh, let me just check something real quick. Stop paying the line. All right. All right. So Ezekiel 16, 19 is my off, which I gave fine flour and oil and honey, wherewith I fed thee, thou hast even set it before them for a sweet savor. And thus it was, saith the Lord God. So all the stuff that I gave you, the land that flow with milk and honey to provide and sustain the nation, you have now gone and given to somebody else. Hosea 2 and 8. So now when somebody do that, right, watch this. So now if you're a man and you got you went and bought some clothing, you bought some bracelets, you bought perfume, you bought whatever it is for your wife, right? And she now goes out there and is now enjoying these with some other man. You're going to be mad as hell. You're going to say, oh, yeah, give me back all my stuff. Take it all off. Give me my car back. You're going to be enraged to now be petty and say, give me everything back. Right. That's what a man would think out of jealousy. Let's look at the most high Hosea chapter two, verse eight. Hosea two and eight, it says, for she did not know that I gave her coin and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. I gave all of that. She didn't realize it. Right. But now check out what the Lord says. Therefore, I will return and take away my corn in the time thereof and my wine in the season thereof. And I will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. All that I given, take back anymore. You want to do that to me? Watch what I will do to you. Verse nine. I'm sorry. Verse 10. And I, I will discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of my hand. So I'm going to come out in the streets, and I'm going to expose you. I'm going to tell the people how, you are, how much of a whore you are, how much of a heart you are, and make your name shameful out there in them streets. That's what the Lord said he was going to do to the nation of Israel. And that's what he's done, right? That's what we get all these bywords and proverbs from, right? That's why they get these narratives about us, because how we dealt with the Lord, the Lord said, guess what I'm going to do to y'all now, right? That's what he's now giving it to us in a form of a relationship. The same way how men have relationships with women and you get mad like that and you want to do that, right? Remember, there was a video online where the brother was talking about, he was like, it was my cinnamon apple, right? He was out there in the middle of the streets. He was mad because his girl had now went and dealt with somebody else. So now he's now expressing how much love he had for her. But now since she want to do that, he was, but he was a bit real ven, ven, uh, petty and vengeful. He was talking about he was going to leak her pictures and do all kind of stuff on the internet, right? That You can't render evil for evil. But that was his way of getting back because he loved her so much and she dissed him. That's what the Lord just said in Hosea. I loved you so much and this is how you treat me. Give me back all my stuff and I'm going to expose you to the world, right? So let's go back to Ezekiel 16. We have verse 20 now. It says, moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters whom thou hast borne unto me. And these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? So when it says the sons and daughters that was born of him, they sacrificed. Some, some of it was literal, right? But in the most part, you have given them over to their holidays, their philosophies. You've given them over like we was at camp the other day and the brother and sister was dead. And you had a whole family come by with about four or five kids. A mother came with about four or five kids. They was all dressed up in Batman outfits and this outfits and that outfits. And you was like, what? You've just sacrificed your children over to them, right? 
So that's how the Lord looks at it. It's not that we just, you know, doing certain things. And then he follows it up and says, is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? That's how most people think about when they're dealing with these different holidays and these different practices. This is a small matter. It ain't a big thing. We're just giving candy to the kids. They just coming by, knocking on my door, just getting candy. It's just a small thing. No, it's not. It's a big deal to the Lord. Y'all think it's a small deal when you go out there and you popping fireworks on that day. Nah, is this a small thing, your whoredoms? Nah. That we're not supposed to be doing. The most side will expose us, right? To protect his reputation, to protect his mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why the, the, the spirit will flee the seat, right? And leave, leave you to your own one because most is not dealing with that. All right. But when you, in, in the example of that, is 2 Corinthians 13 and 8, you say you cannot do anything yeah. against the truth. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so when we do good, it protects the Mosai's reputation. Right. When we do bad, the Mosai take it away to protect his reputation. Right. That's why he said he turned his back on us. Right. Right. That's why that's why Paul had to say, had the Lord cast away his people, because Mosai turned his back on us. People was like, yo, the Mosai ain't dealing with them no more. They done. Right. They done. Right. Because of their wickedness. Even today, the, our own people think that we done. They used to say they think that they done because they're the same people of the Lord. Reading on, I'm gonna to try to get down. Oh, okay. And just to, to echo what Tom before I said, that's a very important point. Because it's gonna be tempting to, uh, you know, feel like, oh, you 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 put shame on Christ's name, but the minute you start going outside of Christ's example, you put like you said, you put shame away from yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And we can see that clearly. Those of us that are called, at least still called. Mm -hmm. Um, we can see that like. Oh, that's on them. That's not on Christ because the standard is here. Right. We already got the standard written. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll say, oh, you're giving the truth a bad name. No, they just out the truth. Go on. So going back to Ezekiel 16, we have verse uh, 21. It says that thou hast slain my children and deliverest them to cause them to pass through the, the fire for them. And in all thine abominations and thy whoredoms, hast thou not remembered the days of thy youth when thou wast naked and bare and was polluted in thy blood? And everything you're doing, you don't remember from whence you came? You ain't consider that? You ain't consider what I gave for you while you out here whoring yourself like this? That's what the Lord is asking. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. And it came to pass after all thy wickedness. Woe, woe unto thee, saith Yahweh, power. Mm -hmm. that thou has also built unto thee an eminent place and has made thee an high place in every street, right? So it's like, look, you think you stop there. Nah, but you making it even worse. You know how sometimes when you watch certain movies, they have like a whorehouse <laughs> on certain blocks, certain places. That's what it's describing as far as for these eminent places, these where people went in but not talking about an actual house this is talking about these different places of worship you set up a catholic church a baptist church a mosque you said what did the sister say today she did with what oh i don't know if she was a sister i'm not sure she was what buddhist, buddhist right now you into buddhist you setting this up everywhere that now your people could come and worship right could be a temple Right, so that's what it says that thou has built unto thee an eminent place and has made thee an high place in every street. That's what the Lord was talking about. We went and set up different groves and altars to come and worship these things. Right now, the Lord is like, Y'all didn't even stop, y'all making it even permanent now. Verse 25 Thou has built thy high place at the head, so like at the every head of the way, and has made thy beauty to be abhorred. And has opened thy feet to everyone that passed by and multiplied thy whoredoms. <laughs> Check that out. So again, it's now still getting into the, the, the word play in the poetic sense. Y'all want to set up all these different types of places of worship, falsehoods and lies and idolatrous places. And what did you do? Like the whore is, 
You've opened up your legs. You've spread your legs for everybody to come on by and just have their way. That's what he says, right? And has opened thy feet to everyone that passed by <laughs> to play the whore, right? The Lord is very figurative in this sense, right? Give me Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 13. Actually, I'm going to start at 11. Jeremiah 11 and 11. To kind of describe the same thing that we're talking about here. So it says in Jeremiah chapter 11 and 11, Therefore thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And thou, and though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. I ain't listening. Don't call my phone. Don't text me. Don't DM me. I ain't listening, right? Verse 12, then shall the cities of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense, but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. So now after their real husband don't want a kid listen to them and do anything with them, they're going to go right back, run around there to those, those men that they went and played the harlot with. And guess what? Usually those men don't want but one thing, right? They just want to use and abuse you. But now when you need that real help, they better get out of here. <laughs> you ain't mine. Get out of here. So now you're running around trying to find somebody to come save you when the most high, your husband had already saved you, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> you ain't getting that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So now reading on in Jeremiah 11 and... And 13 now, it says, for according to the number of thy cities where thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal. Check that out. It says, to the, according to the cities where their gods, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, have ye set up altars. For you can go in every block. Look at us. This is the Lord seeing us right now in the future. Yeah. Go almost every block. You're going to find some form of idol worship. Right now, in just this one block, you got, well, you can say you got one, two, and then right down there is three different churches. Right? Three of them just between here. So the Lord, when he said, listen, you go almost on every street, you're going to find. And, and if you talk about the street. This is a long street. <laughs> this is just two blocks within the street. The Lord said every street, there's a false idol place of worship. Check that out. All right. That you have now set up to go worship Baal or to go and follow after these other false gods. All right. So now let's go back. Conscious. Um, so because of our disobedience, that's one of the reasons that we're in the conditions that we're in, in now. So can it be asked when the Most High created everything from the, at, at the very beginning, could it have been created where, and I know, uh, you know, because it's painful that we're in this position now. Mm -hmm. why, why is there a way, why could it have been a thing where the Most High Made it where we did not sin. You know, it's already happened, but here we are now. Right. So, can that question be asked of the Most High to say, Most High, why you just ain't make, why you just ain't make us from the beginning during the time of Adam in the sixth day to say that everything would have just been perfect, right? No man, when the serpent came to, de to deceive Eve. Eve would have never been deceived. She would have never taken to her husband and they would have never went out there and followed any other different type of tree. Mm -hmm. They would have just kept the most high's way and we would have lived in perfect harmony, right? That's the question that you're asking, sis? 
Absolutely. Right. Paquat. You could read um, Genesis 12 and 7. Since the Mosai said he created us in his own image. So which means the Mosai has his will. Right? So everything that the Mosai has is characteristic. He gave us. Mm -hmm. He gave us a will to choose. That's the that's where that's that, that's where we messed up. Just like we just like he has a will, right? He choose to do what he wants. He gives you a will to choose also. He just wants you to obey. Right. Right? You, and, instead of us being like robots, but keep in mind, if we choose wrong, his will is gonna override our will. Mm -hmm. so Come on, can bring it up. I'll go to one that I always like as it pertains to this. This is the book of Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah. Hopefully it's Isaiah. If not, let me just go and double check. It might be. Give me one second here. Let me make sure I get this right. Um, Amos. The book of Amos, the ninth chapter. Right. Why didn't the most high make it this way where we would not have had to have gone through these things? Right. So this is Amos, the ninth chapter. And then uh, Kahan Nabiya, if you can give me Isaiah 55, I think it is. Isaiah 55. And this is Amos, the ninth chapter. And I'm going to read. From verse, I'm gonna read verse six, right? This is where you read, I think it's in Job or Proverbs, where it says the most high um speaking doubles or twofold on certain things, right? This is one of them. So this is Amos the ninth chapter in the sixth verse. I've gone to this in the past before, but this is good. This is a good point to bring for that answer. It says, It is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven, right? The he is talking about the most high. Mm -hmm. The stories is what? The stories is what we now have as the scripture, right? We read from Genesis 1 on how the earth was created. It's a part of the storyline. The whole story. We read about um, how the earth, the birds and the fish and the animals and all these things were created, how the land was created, how the sun, moon, and stars were created. We're reading the Most High story, right? Then it goes into how he created nations and then how these nations began to interact with one another and how this nation went to war with one another and how the Most High went and told this people to go and conquer and kill this people, kill the women, the children, all the men, the animals and burn the city. This is a part of the story. So where do we get this from? The Most High God. Before anything ever became an, uh, an action, it was a story in the Most High's heaven, right? So I'm going to read it again. It says, it is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven. So this is all what the Most High wanted, right? So what he wanted to do. So I liken it to you have people who do movies today, who write TV series or some major motion picture that's out in the movie theater. When that person is inspired to write, they think about the movie before they even get a cast of characters. They said, you know what? I want to write a movie about such and such. And they thinking, and maybe a month ago by, two months ago by, and then they start jotting down thoughts that they have. So now as they jotting down thoughts, they starting to pull the, the beginning, the opening scenes, the middle and the end. They already now start thinking about the villain and the hero of this story, right? So all of this is now played out. We do this every day. We watch all different kinds of TV shows and movies. We go to the theaters. And that's all we're doing is watching the inspiration of some man or woman and how they made this movie the way it is. Mm -hmm. Now, we as the critic or the viewer of the movie, sometimes we sit there and we say, I ain't like that. Why he had to do that in the movie? Why she had to go and touch that over there? See, that's why that right there wasn't even believable. Right. We critique the movie that we're watching. Right. We thought it was either a great movie or a trash movie. But a song wrote a movie. So it is, we have the Bible. It's the same thing. Most high built his stories 
in the heavens, what we call the scriptures, right? An actor who now has now gotten the script from that person who wrote the movie, he got to go say, what part do I play? What part am I playing, right? If you reading the whole script, you say to yourself, I hope I get the leading character, <laughs> right? Because the leading character is the hero of the movie. It's the fame person in the, in the script. I hope I get that, right? But if I don't get that, I hope I get another good supporting role. I want to get the supporting role. So you got to go out there and now find people to play these characters in the movie. The Most High just didn't find people. He created them. We are his creation to fulfill this script, this storyline. Read it on. It says, and he is he, it is he that buildeth his story in the heaven and have founded his troop in the earth. Meaning he created the different cast of characters in the earth. That's where you get us from. That's where the trees is from, the lakes, the rivers, the clouds, all of that is what the most high created and founded in the earth to now act out his stories. It says he. He that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. He did all of that. For what? His prerogative, right? His doing, because that's what he wanted. So now as I go and I look at, what's the guy who did Django? No, the, the writer, the movie, the director. Ta Quentin Tarantino. So now I could have gone to Quentin Tarantino and say, Quentin, if I was to ever see him somewhere, like, yo, Quinn, that was a great movie in Django. But, you know, that one scene that was happening here, you could have just changed the writing up on that. Quinn to come out and say, nah, that's how I wanted it. The way I put it in the movie, that's how I wanted it. If you want to do a movie, you do your own movie. But this is how my movie goes, right? So now we are, now get Isaiah 55 and 10 to go along with that, that spirit. 55 and 8 is a lot. Isaiah 55 and 8. Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, say the Lord. So he says, my thoughts, what I think about, ain't the same thing what you think about, right? Neither are your ways the same as my ways. Read. Whereas the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Right. So are my ways, my thoughts, everything. I'm thinking on a higher level of understanding and comprehension that you can ever imagine. That's why the Lord even asked Ezra, can you can you weigh the uh, what did he say? Um, give me the weight of a flame. Give me the weight of a flame, Ezra, because Ezra was trying to think on the most highest level, like how the sister's asking you. She's not by herself. Right. Others have asked that most high. Why you just can't do this right now? Do it like this. And the most high said, hold on, Ezra, you think you know more than me? You think you on my level? Let me give you an example of where I'm at with it. Bring back the day that passed. I'm just like, what? What are you talking about? Bring back the day that passed. Give me the weight of a flame. How do I measure the weight of a flame? Who could do that? I'm just trying to show you, Ezra, that I'm on another plane right now. You don't even see what's coming or going. Just follow the script. Just follow what I laid down. The most I said, I can make a whole nation of people out of rocks and stones. So to the sister's question, yeah, the most I could have done that. He can do anything he wants to do, but he just didn't do that which we would like to do. He did what he wanted to do. And now we just have to act out and follow the script and play out our part to the best of our ability to get to the reward and the end that's promised to those who now fulfill his will. That's the key. So those who are not in the leading role of the script, they are fulfilling their roles ignorantly to the T, <laughs> perfectly. Everything that's happening right now is being fulfilled perfectly according to the script, right? So that's what we now have as proof. What's that scripture, Nabi? You quoted a lot as far as for the most high is known by the judgments that he. Yeah. So, 
All right, see so if you can get that. The Most High is known by the judgment that he executed. So you know that the Most High is real based on his script, based on everything that you've seen so far in history leading up to right now, right? So you say, well, it is what it is. The Lord coulda, shoulda, woulda, but this is what he chose to do, mm -hmm. right? While you're getting that, Yahweh Kanan, then uh, Pequot. Yeah, because even read um, Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. From one to six. What does it say? We're not gonna read all of that, but what is it talking about? Is it you know um just that's where we read the first verse. The word the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, you know, go to the, the potter's house, right? Mm -hmm. And he made a vessel of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. That's what it's for. Verse 5, and then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, said the Lord. Mm -hmm. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Right, that's the good, that's the verse. That's the verse right there. Uh, Jeremiah 18 and 6. O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Meaning, everything that I have created for you to do, or any other nation, isn't it my will to do with you what I want? If I didn't want you to do this and be perfect in the beginning, then you wasn't going to be perfect. But if I wanted you to be perfect and without sin, without flaw in the beginning, during the time of the sixth day when I created man, it doesn't. He just didn't want to do that. He just didn't write the script for it to fulfill that will. Mm -hmm. The script is written the way it is to fulfill his will for how it is written. Pequot. And, and I would say, in conclusion, the best thing that we have is the law. The law is our best, our greatest friend. Why? Because the law makes things predictable. The law makes everything predictable. Without the law, everything is chaos out of order. So the most I create everything to function according to law right so we follow the law you get this you don't follow the law you get that that's how easy it is that's right. how, it's as simple as that right but she that's that's for now right what she's talking about is with the law right why didn't the most high just make it so that we could just keep the law without no sin so we can keep the law without no sin right that's what she's asking so Deuteronomy 28 and 1 tells you i mean exactly what you're saying keep the law without sin right right that's the way the most I said it, exactly what you said. Right. That's his prerogative. He right. set it up, everything functioned according to laws, and that's how we got to do it. Just obey. Right. I, I think that what it was that he did, when the most high, he made uh, written everything that he wanted and a choice. He gave us a choice. Mm -hmm. You gotta have a you have your own choice. You go right or go left. Right, but. With that, right? So I'm gonna give you an understanding because I understand where this is coming from because he's not the first one that's asked that question. We've heard that question many times before. Now, we know we have a choice, right? But remember, the new covenant in the book of Hebrews says what? Eighth chapter. What is the new covenant? What is the most high gonna do to the nation of Israel? He's gonna put the law in our inward parts. So that's what she's asking. Why couldn't the law just be in our inward parts from the beginning? Why we gotta wait to the end when Christ come back and go through all these thousand years and all these captivities and everything else? Why we couldn't just have fulfilled Hebrews 8 and 8 in the beginning? That's what Ezra was trying to get to. Just bring the kingdom right now, Mosai. This is taking too long. Why we gotta go through all this? Without that, we would not know what good it is uh, how how beautiful the kingdom is right because keep in mind even though we're going to have the law in our inward part we're going to still remember when we used to sin right, right. so the, no we, he's going to say when we wake up in bed we got up it seems like you know it was yesterday all the affliction that we went through. right right so 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 when we when we have it in our inward part we still gonna remember how wicked we were right. except that we won't be able to sin right it won't be that we're gonna that that's gonna be wiped out because we still gonna have the scriptures yeah, yeah, yeah. we still gonna have the scriptures we still gonna know that we sinned it ain't like we get into the kingdom and we rule with christ and now 
We, we, we don't know nothing about what happened before time. We're going to have to know these things because we're going to still have to keep the Passover. We're going to still have to keep the Feast of the Tabernacles because even in the scripture talk about if a nation don't want to come up and keep the Tabernacles, shame on them. This is going to happen. So we're going to know that before time, we were sinning and we did this. So we're going to have that remembrance of our, our ancestry. And people are going to be asking us, why is this thing burning? We, then we're going to have to explain to them what, what happened in the past. Exactly. So if we don't know what sin is and how breaking the law, how to be in that situation, we wouldn't be able to appreciate the thing, the kingdom once we have it. Right. Even though we have the law written in our hand with what? Yeah, I think we're talking about he's going to wipe away oh. our judgment. He's going to know. What we did. We're not going to be held up to that. He's going, okay, he's going to wipe away our people that still remember it, but he won't remember it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what they say. That's what they say. Forgive, but don't forget. Yeah. Like it's like you know, you need to forgive, but don't don't worry about it. Okay, but you, I forgive you, but I still remember what you did. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like my memory just went away. I remember what I felt like what you did, what you did to me, right? <laughs> so, so uh, a warrior. In short, the short answer to that is the Most High could have done that. But it was not in his will to do that. He wanted it to have and play out the way it is right now that we have in the scriptures. We never want to limit the most high to say the most high couldn't have done such and such. He could have done any and everything that he wanted to do, but it was his choice to do it in this way. Right. right? That's the short answer of it uh, outside of what we just read. Uh, Psalms 9 6. All right. Ayanda Bar. Well, that's the scripture that um I was asking about. Psalms 9. Come on, read that verse. Psalms 9 and 16. Come. Psalms chapter 9, verse 16. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is standing in the work of his own hand. Take down the law. Right. So the Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. Meaning, we know that the Most High is real. We know that the Bible's God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our power is the power based on the judgments that he has executed. You can go a lot of these other Buddha and all these other different so-called false gods and ask what judgments have they done? What things did they say was going to happen and it happened? And we'll wait, right? And you're going to be waiting for a while. You're going to say, you know what? I ain't going to hold you, but let me give you what our God has said and done in the earth that is recorded. Let me also give you what our God has said was going to be happening right now. Let me also tell you what's still to come. And if you fail to realize and believe, just wait and be a part of history when it happens. Right? That's what we say. Because you're going to have more unbelievers than believers. Right? For quiet. Right. And now I give one uh, simple example. Like, for example, when we buy a car, right? And the, 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 the manufacturer said, you got to put unleaded in it. Unleaded. Unleaded. Gas, right? You can't put anything on but unleaded, right? We just go and buy the car, we just put unleaded on in it, right? But you can choose to, you know, put pee in it, <laughs> right? Or to put water in it, it's gonna malfunction, right? So that's how the most hypes, and, and they did not ask us for our permission. Why couldn't we put, you know, a uh, 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 white gasoline in it? Right. They don't ask us for our permission, the same way the most I don't ask us for his permission for his creation. Mm -hmm. So he just created what he created, and you follow the rules, right. But he could have go extra mile, do whatever he wanted, but that's the way he, he planned to do it. Mm -hmm. All right, con, con. So let's get back to uh, Ezekiel 16. It's almost it's past where I've wanted to go as far as the time. But let's get back to Ezekiel 16 and finish up some of these precepts here. Ezekiel 16, I think we at verse 26. Ezekiel 16 and 26. And just another, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, um, based on a warrior's question, right? And Paquad, that last uh, um, thing that you just mentioned, as far as what we had to learn, keeping in mind at all nations in the level of the Most High, the Most High wouldn't have made all nations perfect like that mm -hmm. outside of his nation first. So our nation had to be the perfect nation. 
So we needed to learn. And then after we learn and get it right, then the other nation is going to follow our lead. But it's that point that he made up as far as for us now going through all of these different examples and trials and tribulations and learning from it to prove ourselves and to prove the remnant of us to be that perfect group that was now going to lead in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. But it still doesn't mean that the most High couldn't have just made us perfect from the beginning. And then all the other nations would have to be going through everything that we gone through. Mm -hmm. It would have been us, us just being in the kingdom from day one. But it was not his, his determination. Mm -hmm. So now verse 26 in Ezekiel 16, it says, Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, great of flesh, and has increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Behold, therefore, I have stretched out my hand over thee and have diminished thine ordinary food and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee, the daughters of the Philistines, which are ashamed of thy lewd way, right? So now we recognize, like I said, the Bible is in twofold. It's speaking about Israel, but it's speaking about us as a nation in comparison to being a woman. When it's talking about these Egyptians and these Philistines, it just gave you an insight. Just like how Esau is the daughter of Babylon, he says here, I'm going to give thee and I will, uh, I will deliver thee unto the will of them that hate thee. The daughters of the Philistines, right? It's not just talking about the Philistines, but those who come in the same practices, the same idolatrous ways, like the Philistines, like those Egyptians, I'm going to give you them. I'm going to give you to them as well. Verse 28, thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians because thou was unsatiable. Unsatiable meaning you could not be fulfilled, right? You just had to keep eating. You had to keep going from this one to that one. Right. There was nothing that was going to call you to say, ah, oh, I'm good. This right here, I'm done. No, we were unsatiable as a people. Exactly. Exactly. No one when no one when to stop. No one to say enough is enough. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that. Right. Yeah. Thou hast played the harlot with them and yet couldst not be satisfied. Thou hast moreover multiplied thy fornication in the land of Canaan unto Chaldea, and yet thou wast not satisfied herewith. Mm -hmm. How weak is thine heart, saith the Lord God, seeing thou dost all these things, the work of an, an imperious, whorish woman, arrogant, whorish woman. So this is like conversation. He said, how weak is thine heart? You talking to somebody? Damn, you, you date me like that? I thought better of you. What's in your heart to, for you to think this way? That's how the Lord is speaking to us. Like a man would speak to his woman that just dissed him, that just cheated on him, but he hurt. Like, yo, what was in your heart to do this to me, right? It says, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious, ar arrogant, domineering person, that's what an imperious is, whorish woman. And that thou buildest thine an eminent place in the head of every way and makest thine high place in every street and hast not been as an harlot and that thou scornest higher. Now check that out. The most High all along is calling Israel as a whore, mm -hmm. played as a harlot. But if you, pick, if you miss what he just said, I'm going to read it again. He says, and that thou buildest thine eminent place in the head of every way and makest thine high place in every street. Now check it out, pay attention. And hast not been as an harlot, in that thou scornest higher. What is the Lord saying here? Now he's saying that thou hast not been as a harlot. What the most high is saying here is a whore. A whore is a whore for what? Reward, money, something, car, bag, whatever the case may be. She's going to go out there and whore herself out to receive gifts, to get money. Mm -hmm. But that's not what Israel did. Israel didn't go out there and play the whore to receive gifts. Israel said, no, nah, I don't want your money. I don't want that from you. Matter of fact, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to give you rewards and gifts. That's how Israel was not playing like a real true harlot because a harlot wants to receive money and things. Mm -hmm. So that's what the Most High is saying. Thou has not been as a harlot. It says, and thou scornest higher. You don't want somebody coming to give you money. You don't want it. 
<laughs> it's just like <laughs> the most highs, the most highs wordplay is beautiful, man. It's, it's epic when you put it in perspective of how he's doing that comparison. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're not even a whore, you're a slut. Right? A slut just go do it just just cuz. A son, a, a slut, a do it, and they go take you somewhere. <laughs> you need to ride somewhere. That's a slut. You like damn. <laughs> a whore is about her money, <laughs> not the slut. <laughs> That's why in Matthew six thirteen we pray for the Most High to keep us from temptation. Mm -hmm. That's what temptation does. Mm -hmm. You say I'm gonna do it. This thing right here, just for a little bit, right? And then you do that little bit, you get a little bit of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. The satisfaction goes away. But you remember that little satisfaction you get. You go again and do it to get more satisfaction. Mm -hmm. You get more satisfaction, and then it goes away. Until we go deep, deep, deep. We even forget the first time why we even get it from the first place. Because we, we're now swimming in a, in, 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 in a pool of uh, um, uh, um, sin. And we already done far. Now we can't. We can't. It's like you can't go back. Mm -hmm. You're too far. You're too far in in the temptation. <clears throat> now, though, something that started just a little. That's why the Most High said a little leaven, 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 up leaven the, the whole lump. lump. So that's why the Most High said even a little bit of temptation, stay away from it. Because the Most High, the minute that we go into that temptation, you know we'll be destroyed. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> And our brother Esau, he's gonna be the biggest nickel of all. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're gonna look at him in the museum and be like, "This is temptation unhinged." Right. This is this is, this is the heights of what they got mm -hmm. and how they got it. And now, like you were saying earlier, come on. Now this whole place, only way to deal with this, what's been done here, only way that it can be justified, is that this place burn and burn continue. Right. You can't even live here anymore. Not bad. Right. It, it's kind of like when we, when we said at, at, from the beginning, we went in, we probably went in as a little harder, get a little bit of money. After a while, we we do it so much, we don't even do it for money anymore. Mm -hmm. We lost the whole purpose of why we came for as a harder. <laughs> so let's read, let's read this again and move on. It says, and that thou, verse 31. And that thou buildest thine eminent place in the head of every way, all these different churches and false places of worship, right? And makest thine high place in every street, and hast not been as an harlot, and that thou scornest higher. Verse 32. But as a wife, thou committed adultery. So you did commit adultery. You were married unto me. You were with me, but you went out and fashioned yourself for somebody else, which taketh strangers instead of her husband. Verse 33, they gave gifts to like they give gifts to all whores, but thou givest gifts or thy gifts to all thy lovers. <laughs> a normal, a normal person who's dealing with a whore, they bring gifts to the whore. But you go give your gifts to all your lovers, right? It says, and hires them that they may come unto thee on every side for thy whoredom, right? We go and we look for every different religion, every different ideology, everything, and we give all of our stuff to them. It's like they make merchandise of you. Mm -hmm. right? They make merchandise of you. It's just like with the rappers, they go, they live in there, and, but the people that on top of them are billionaires and you know, making weight, it's like the, you become the commodity. Right. You're making them money as opposed to making your money. Right. Verse 34, it says, and the contrary is in thee from other women in thy whoredoms. Right? So now the Lord is saying we are contrary to what a real whore is. Right? It says, whereas none followeth thee to commit whoredoms, and in that thou givest a reward, and no reward is given unto thee. Therefore, thou art contrary now check this out check out what the lord is saying here a true whore is going to go get rewards from somebody else but we are contrary to a whore kahan nabi says we like we like a slut right we go and give our gifts to everybody else but then it says but none followeth thee 
none giving their reward. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody out here following us. Ain't no nations out here following us right now to say, hey, I'm going to come and follow your God and then give our rewards to you, like how we doing to them. That's not happening right now. Look at all the schools of the most high. Look at all the different schools throughout the whole earth. You don't have the nations coming and saying, hey, I'm going to offer up a sacrifice to you. I'm going to go. They're going to be forced to do that in the kingdom. But for right now, we willingly went and gave up our riches and our rewards to everybody else. But none in the reverse is doing that to us. That's shameful. <laughs> and we're the lover of the most high. We would expect that to happen, which it is going to happen in the kingdom. But right now, it's not. It's bad. That's why when you look at us, like uh, uh, every everything that we have, our gifts, we give all our gifts to the to, 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 to the other people, and that's literally true. Because right now, the gift that the Most High give us, the seed that the Most High give us, and what we're not exercising that for us, we exercise that for them. We bring it to them. We don't excel in our gift. We don't even know what we what we should be doing with the gift that the Most High give us. Right, but we go and expand it. Them, they, they give us all our gift and everything we have, our talent, everything we just give it to them. Go ahead. We don't move the tribes. We can look at Judah, right? The head tribe. The prophecy says he shall be in the neck, not the head. The neck of my enemy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was just the Most High overshadowing what they were doing. You know, I know they're dealing with wickedness, but I always laughed at that. Uh, the title of the album that Jay Z and Kanye did, "The Watch the Throne," mm -hmm. because it speaks to the whole boule thing, as far as like about which means advisor to the king. It's like he's supposed to be sitting on the thing, not watching. It. Right. You know, for this guy, he's not the king. He's not the real king. He's just a placeholder. He just shows you mm -hmm. how uh, everything. Yeah, everything just flips up upside down. Man. Good. So I'm gonna read a few more of these verses. So this is uh, verse thirty-five. Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> it just kind of even sound. Wherefore, O whore, <laughs> you whore, you. <laughs> it's like that. God, the whole time talking about us, man. <laughs> this is shameful, right? It says, Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God. And, and in, a, in a figurative sense, that's, that's kind of how we are speaking to our people that's out there in the, in the world that's still following after these other philosophies. Right. They don't realize that they're like they are the whore, spiritual whore, the spiritual fornication that the most High is describing. Mm -hmm. We were at point one point like that in our minds, in our ways, until the Lord now had to open up our eyes to see this truth. So now we got to go and prophesy and educate and teach and plant the seed so that others can see and understand the same thing that was given to us. But again, wherefore, oh, harlot, man, verse 36. It said, thus saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers and with all the idols of thy abominations and by the blood of the children, which thou didst give unto them. Behold, therefore, I will gather all thy lovers with whom thou hast taken pleasure and all them that thou hast loved with all them that thou hast hated. I will even gather them round about against thee, and I will deliver thy nakedness unto them. Say again. Squat. I will gather them round about against thee, and I will discover thy nakedness unto them, that they may see all thy nakedness. So that's what the Lord's judgment was. Everybody that we went out there and played a harlot with, now he's exposed us to all of them. That's why we are the bywords and the proverbs to all nations. Yeah, like, yeah, leak the photos, right? Leak the video. This is what has happened to us. Now, our shame is now made before the, the nations. That's why when we talk about, um, and they shall, what is the verse when they talk about, and they shall walk by, and they shall pass by and hiss and say, is this the people? Oh, Lamentations 2.15. Lamentations 2.15. Let me read that real quick. This is what the Most High is describing right now. Lamentations 2.15. The water Aki. It says... It says, all that pass by, clap their hands at thee. 
they hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem saying, is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? It says, all thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash their teeth or gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we look for. We have found and we have seen it, meaning that the Most High has now flipped the script. He has now allowed us to fall before our enemies. And then they could come back and say, wait, this was the chosen people? This was the perfection of beauty, the one who was renowned and famous throughout all the earth? Look at them now. Man, we waited for this day for salvation to come to the nations, right? That's what they was looking for. Romans 11, 11. So this is now a judgment that the Most High put upon Israel, his lover, because of her whoredom. Right. I think this is uh, very beautiful. This is beautiful. It's being brought out. Mm -hmm. it, it pretty much um, intrigues us to um, do that scripture that says examine ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because usually when we know we're Israelite and we got chosen people, sometimes we tend to be one-sided and say, Esau this, Esau that, Esau this. But we forget that it starts with us and we tend. Yep. Right? So we, as we bring in Esau this, Esau that, we got to balance it out. Yep. Because the most I was never intended for us to be ruled by anybody. Yep. And if we if that happens because of us, it's not because of Esau. Mm -hmm. Okay. So reading on, go a few more verses, then we're going to stop. Verse 30. 37 no 38 so this is 38 now it says and i will judge thee as women that break wedlock and shed blood are judged and i will give thee blood and fury and jealousy so the lord says the same way you deal with a woman who breaks wedlock commits adultery what's supposed to happen to a woman that commits adultery she's supposed to be stoned to death mm -hmm. so the lord says he's going to now deal with us that's the judgment and that's why we've gone through the hardships that we have gone through. That's why we are put to death out here in these streets the way we've been murdered. Mm -hmm. It also says burn with fire, right? Uh-huh. Is there any other judgment that has been burned with fire? It's kind of interesting thinking about America, right? Or Babylon. Mm -hmm. Her judgment is burned fire. Just yep. quick. That law, but they have the spiritual spirit. Right? Great war of Babylon. Right. All right. So I'm going to read. I'm going to read down to 43 and then we're going to stop. So this is verse 40, 39. It says, and I will also give thee into their hand and they shall throw down thy eminent place and shall break down thy high places. They shall strip thee also of thy clothes and shall take thy fair jewels and leave thee naked and bare, right? So this is, again, it's figurative. So they took our name, they took our identity, they took our land, they took everything away from us, stripped us bare, and then gave us other names and things that they wanted to clothe us with. It says in 40, they shall also bring up a company against thee and they shall stone thee with stones and thrust thee through with their swords, meaning the captivity, they was going to kill us. Right. It was going to put us to death. Right now, we still finding people hung on trees. Right. The little uh, um, some I forget what city it was. They found them hung behind a, a post office or something like that. Just a couple months ago. But the Lord signifying and said that we was going to be killed because of our whoredom, our harlotry. Verse 41. And they shall burn thine houses with fire. That was literal. That's coming up when they showed us during the slavery time when they put the cross on our on the front lawn and burned it. Then after that, what did they do? They burned the houses down. They shot and killed us and burned our houses down to the foundation. And they shall burn thine house with fire and execute judgments upon thee in the sight of many women. And I will cause thee to cease from playing the harlot. And thou also shall give no hire anymore so this is happening so that we don't continue to go play the harlot it's supposed to be a deterrent the death judgment was supposed to always been a deterrent right you see someone stoned you said man i don't want to do that you see how his head cracked open you said the blood was running down man his eyes are, that's supposed to be a deterrent 
So that's what the Lord says, that he's done this so that you do not go and give higher anymore to play the harlot. Mm -hmm. Verse 42. So will I make my fury toward thee to rest and my jealousy shall depart from thee and I will be quiet and will be no more angry. So after a while, it's going to change. You're going to realize we're going to come back like we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Some of us have heard Christ in John the Baptist when he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We said, dang, I didn't realize. I ain't supposed to eat that. I ain't supposed to keep that day. What did they do to Thanksgiving to my brethren? Oh, man, I didn't know. You repent and then stop playing the whore and going out there following all these philosophies and doctrines, giving your children over to them things. It's not supposed to be done. Verse 43, because thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, but hast fretted me in all these things. Behold, therefore, I will also, I also will recompense thy way upon thine head, saith Yahweh. And thou shalt not commit lewdness above all thine abominations. So that's the key, right? That, that's what this is all about. All of these crimes and things, when we come out there with signs and we show our slavery and we show the hanging, it's to remind our people that these things is happening for breaking God's commandment. Like Paquad said, it's not so much about Esau. We know Esau was created to be the people that he was created. But the focus is really on us. Had we had not given into their temptation, had we not been so enamored and so, you know, uh, uh, curious to go and follow that way, we would have never entered into these things. Esau would have never been in rulership or power. The other nations would have never been that way. We entertained it, and now we allowed them to rise and give them their salvation. You say, what? Curiosity did what? <laughs> killed the cat, yeah. right? It killed us, <laughs> right? So now, you know, they say the cat has how many lives? We're in our ninth life right now. We're trying to make sure that we survive until the end, mm -hmm. till Christ come back. So now remembering all that stuff that we went through, that we don't do those things again, right? The, uh, the one third, the elect, to now come back and ask for forgiveness to your husband. Say, can you take me back? Can you take me back? What is that? I think it's in Hosea. Is it Hosea? When the Most High said, go ask a man if his wife committed adultery on him, was he going to take it back? Hell no, he ain't going to take it back. But I keep taking y'all back. That's what the most I say. I keep taking you back. Yes, exactly. A symbolic to the nation of Israel. You got some of us who are hard right now. Your wife cheat on you? Hell with that. You got some women, their husband cheat on Hell with that. I ain't, I ain't no forgiveness. The most I said, but look how lenient. Look how much I love y'all. Y'all been doing this to me. For generations upon generations upon generations, and I keep taking y'all back. What kind of mercy and love is that? You that's why what, what did the disciples say? Christ, increase my faith. <laughs> Christ, increase my faith. Because that type of forgiveness, man, it's hard for a person to keep doing that to you over and over and over. Man, it's hard, but that's what the Lord is saying. I'm doing this to you so that you can remember and never do it again. Yeah, 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 exactly. They call him a simpleton. You're a fool. You took her back, you're a fool. What? It's right. love. And, and you gotta understand that it's like I created this thing. It's mine anyway. Right. So if, if, if he comes back, I'll, I, I'll take it because I created it. It's mine. Right. So, I mean, that's the standpoint, man, the way I'm looking. That's my, that's my, thing. not somebody else created it. Mm -hmm. I created it. Right. If he comes back to me, I'll take it back. But he got to come back in my terms the way I want to do that. Right. That small thing about, you know, David had gotten a wife. He would gotten a wife. And then I think Saul gave that, you know, woman to another man. But eventually, eventually David went and got her back, you know, to, you know for his wife. Mm -hmm. And her ex-husband was running after her. Her husband at that time was going after, after her and the men, like, tell him to go home. <laughs> go back home. No. This is mine. Yeah. She, she's mine. Yeah. Regardless of if you separate her or not. Yeah, they said, she, she would say he was running, he was crying, boy. <laughs> when you read it, he was crying. Well, I can imagine. You get your wife and all of a sudden she said, listen, well, I can't be with you. I have to be with him. He was running behind her. No! <laughs> crying. All right, so we're going to stop there in Ezekiel. Uh, the 16th chapter. If you want, you can read further on. It goes into more detail about Sodom and all that other stuff, right? 
But I'm going to end off with um, a new moon verse. You know, y'all put y'all on notice, but I'm going to bail y'all out. Um, say again. You want to read that? All right, there you go. I, read that. Isaiah 66, 23 for, the la for a new moon scripture to close us out on. Isaiah 66, 23. Isaiah 66, verse 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, said the Lord. Right. All flesh, everybody is supposed to come worship before the Most High. Right. That's the determination. Right. Especially all the children of Israel. We're going to always keep the Sabbath, always keep the new moons. Right now, it's a smaller portion of the nation that's doing it now, but it will come to pass that all of us, 100%, uh, will be keeping the Most High's holy days and new moons and Sabbath days and honor and worship of him on his day like we're doing tonight, right? And it's going to be very grand glorious, right? You know, it's going to be a festival. We're going to really have a banquet of food. We're really going to have a joyous occasion of brotherhood and sisterhood where we're not worrying about any cares of the world, any of those things about what got to, you know, during the week sometimes you, the new moon come, I got to get up to go to work the next day. So I can't out to, can't. That's going to be, we're going to be really in a good spirit. We keep those hard days. And that day, this is just the buildup. But the Christ, this is a shadow of things to come, right? This is just a shadow. We're going to learn more different things. All right. So with that, we're going to close out today's new moon class. Remember, this is the ninth month. We do have a high holy day, the feast of the rededication of the altar coming up in this month in a few weeks. I can't remember off the top of my head um, what the dates are. Let me see if I can pull it up. If somebody else has it. The dates of the rededication of the altar. And Say again, December 8th. Wait. Come Tuesday, December 8th is the opening of the Feast of the Rededication of the Altar. And then the closing is the 15th for the Rededication of the Altar. So two, both, both Tuesday nights at sundown will be the Rededication of the Altar within this ninth month on the 25th day. And then right around there, right around in between that week is always a new moon, mm -hmm. right? So within that week, that eight day feast is gonna be a new moon as well, if anybody forgot, right? All right, so we're gonna send up the closing prayers. Again, uh, we're gonna give all praise, honor and glory to the most high for knowledge, wisdom and understanding that was brought out in tonight's class. Remember, it tells you in Ecclesiasticus chapter one, verse one, let me read it real quick. Right. So, so that no man gets high minded. It says all wisdom coming from the Lord and is with him forever. So no man can think that, oh, he got this wisdom. He went and found this. And that. no, it's not your own. It come from the most high. Right. So you always got to be thankful for the most high for the wisdom that we receive and that is now stay with us. So uh, the water to the brothers and sisters that uh, watched it was watching on the live stream to the brothers and sisters that dialed in on the teleconference line. Most high's will you was fulfilled spiritually. You have any further questions, write them down and bring them to the Tuesday class upcoming next week or the Friday class upcoming next week. Um, enjoy the night. Enjoy the new moon. If you haven't feasted, um, you know, join us as we after we finish the service. That's what we're going to do. We're going to eat a little food, have a look at you one, then enjoy it for the rest of the day. So stay tuned for closing prayer, prayers and blessing of the food. Mm -hmm. I get the blonde drop of a shot.
Rakafa Yahawa, Basham Yahawa Shah, Ashara, Nathanawa, Par Yahagapin, Thawada Amun, La Yahawa Basham Yahawa Shah, Ath Yasha Ella. All right, English translation. I failed to give the English translation in the beginning, <clears throat> but what we just said is blessed. Blessed are you, Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, that gives to us the fruit of the vine. Thank you so be it to Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai with Israel. I might upon you while you're awesome, stand and face Jerusalem. <clears throat> Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Baba Kushai, Shemai, Lanawa, Aitha, Yam Yun, Aitha, Shalak, Maya Ka'ala, Raha Alahayim, Tazwadakim, La, Shema Ayam, Barak, Rapa, Magun, Raha Kazayak, Banya, Yasha Allah, Washalak, Lanawa, Rabium Kakama, Rabium the I, Rabium Bayana, Rabium Sabalonwa, Rabium I'm a one, Rabium Aqua, Rabium Ahabium, Rabium Hagana, Rokhanaya, Wasalat, Kau, Kata Yamnawa, Laha Akim, Wa Akua, Wayasha Allah, Thum Yad, Waiwalum. Ba'asham, Yahawasha, Thawada, Amun. English translation, most high in the name of Christ, please listen to us now, right now. Send Michael and the righteous powers and angels to watch over, bless, heal, protect, and make strong the children of Israel. And send to us much wisdom, much knowledge, much understanding, much patience, much faith, much brotherhood, much love, much spiritual protection. And forgive all our sins for the brothers and sisters in Israel always and forever. In the name of Yahweh Shah or Christ, thank you so bid. Four corners prayer. Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Barak Nawa, Wayasha Allah, Wabatia Saparim, Shama, Yasharella, Yahweh, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh, Akha. All right, English translation. Most high in the name of Christ, bless us and Israel and the house of books or the schools scattered throughout the four corners. And also Deuteronomy 6 and 4, hear O Israel, the Lord our power is one power. And we're going to do prayer for the food offering. <clears throat> uh, okay. Yahweh, God of all, Ba'asham, Adawanya, Yahweh Shai, Baba Kushai, Barak, Ma'ako, Yanawa, Shatayawa, Yanawa, Yayun, Yanawa, Lakum, Yanawa, Shakarai, Yanawa, Zakai, Shaw, Hayarak, Kadash, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Thawada, Amun. All right, so with that, after the blessing of food, we want to say shalom, yashrala, peace to all the brothers and sisters, and also a shah kadash or happy new moon, happy ninth new moon. Shalom, every, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.